active, and I also sometimes just have to change knobs. And so the idea is really just concentrate on my flute playing and being able with my feet to control um, the processing of the sound. So um, we came up with, um, I, I tried out several things, and I tried out the Nintendo dance mat. I don't know if you know it, it's just like a mat where you can play a dance game. And um, I felt quite good with it, but just I had to do two big movements, so it was like really kind of dancing. So now we came up with the idea to have like small boards with tiny little buttons that are quite comfortable <coughs> to press. And for, um, for controlling the volume, uh, so this is also like sometimes a little bit difficult like standing. So I will also, oh I use now already, a Wii controller. <coughs> so this was the nunchuck and this I just put in here and then I can with the movement of the arm I can control the volume. So I've been here since two days now again, so my food control is still not done. <laughs> so we're still working on it, and the author is building it, and I'm kind of ass assisting him with sewing cables on the board and stuff like this. And for now, I just will use kind of my old setup with the pedals and also using Lisa and Chan Chan to play some. Uh, so I will improvise a little bit for you, just that you get an idea what I'm doing.
Um, this is this is I'm just developing it now, mm -hmm. but it's working quite okay. You know, I just um, since yesterday I have it this way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the weeks before I tried it like this, but mm -hmm. it was kind of yes, this, right. this. And I guess because now I had still the two buttons of the nunchuck to activate it and to deactivate it, but soon I just will use the button and then this is gone too. So I guess I will put it here. So it's mm -hmm. okay. easier with this. And these are just little microphones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are you controlling with nunchuck? Volume. Oh. And pitch, what I just didn't do because this, I, yeah, it's with the two button, it's not very comfortable while playing and stuff. So the, the idea is to control volume and pitch. Mm -hmm.
was wondering about the, the, the confusion itself. Can it be a thing that can be more explored? I mean, there's not a way of playing when you're not able to know which for who is doing what, and that being a sort of a way of playing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a certain balance there, of course, because it's all confusion and you can't really control it. So then it's it's just a matter of chance, maybe. So and a, a little bit of confusion is, is nice and it will always be there, of course. But yeah, if, if you want to be in control, which I want to be to a certain degree, then yeah, the confusion has to be has to go a little bit more to the background, I guess. Yeah. But you can use it definitely as a as to your advantage because it it kind of like. The, Improvised music for me is all about surprise. So you get surprised by something that happens that you didn't really mean to, or you didn't really plan. So confusion is part of that, I guess. So could you say that you're filtering and restraining otherwise slightly chaotic processes? So sort of thing. Um, yeah. As you do, as you do, as a collaboration, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. How did you control or maybe not control the stereo uh, usage? Because I heard a lot of different sounds from different speak from the different speakers. Uh, how was that uh, controlled setup? Um, well, I, I, there's there's uh, uh, some processes that do it kind of like randomly, and there's some processes that I just use a button to fade between to yeah to place it in the stereo field. Okay, so it looks like, uh, sounded like it was layered and something where uh, yeah, but it's randomly also. Some are some is random, just to give the sound a bit more breadth, or just make it a little bit more varied. And some of it is really, uh, yeah, uh, I really place it somewhere. I have like two processes that I, I can sample John, and one is playing back in that speaker, and the other one is playing back in this speaker. So it's kind of, yeah, kind of goes against each other, or sometimes same thing. Okay. Oh, sorry, on the on the stereo note, there's also a lot of stereo delays. So when I make a small sound, right, so back and forth and I'm going to change the time but you get the movement either there's a kind of big texture at faster speeds or this kind of separate just on foot pedals and things yeah. so. so that's another interesting thing actually uh, usually I work quite a lot with instrumentalists that I sample and most of the time they're uh, they're uh, mono because it's it's a wind instrument, or and usually it's just a microphone, and that's what I sample. Um, and then I kind of make it stereo. But with John, actually, he is he works very much with stereo. So sometimes I have a mono process, and then I feel kind of like you know, the acoustic instrument, and John is more like the, the stereo guy. Yeah. <laughs> Which is also, also an interesting mix and not interesting yeah. like yeah confusion or. Um, I have a question. What's that black yellow thing you used on the neck of the guitar? Uh, the Ebo. It's um, yeah, it's called an Ebo, and it just generates a little magnetic field, which then reverberates the string. The closer you hold it, so you get that. And it's, it'll do it at two frequencies, for two different tones. But I don't quite understand the, the way the electromagnetic induction works, but it, it works with the pickup, so you can really change the volume and, and the tone, just because I don't, I'm not sure what induces what in there, but uh, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's what's going on. Yeah. And aren't you worried about sustaining damage to your hearing ability? <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I listen to music similar to this, and um, I love it, but mm -hmm. it's, it's quite risky. To be honest. <laughs> you know, you, you well, we can, this may be different because, in that respect, I'm kind of in a control. Like, this is my volume pedal, so if, if, if I find it too loud, I can just. It. And you, as an audience, have to endure it. You can't control it. So, um, so I guess for me, it's like I, I'm actually sitting in front of the speaker. So, uh, yeah. And I suppose everybody has different like levels of sounds you can endure. But um, I, yeah, I'm trying to not damage any ears. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm, I'm talking about your own ears. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I suspect it's actually a lot louder where, where you're sitting. I mean, I've spent kind of ten years standing next to, to loud drummers and turning guitar amps up, and right in front of them, the sound you somehow don't don't hear it. You kind of feel it, but as you walk forward, it, it suddenly kind of seems to catch you up. I mean, I don't really understand the 
because you know, it's like, it amplifies, doesn't it, within the room? It keeps yeah. It out there and then in the hallway, it's really loud. It's even louder than it is in here. Right. <laughs> so you were standing there. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get away. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't. Any more questions? Yeah, I have one. Uh, because um, you were sampling some of these uh, <coughs> sounds. Yeah. I was, uh, I was wondering, because when you are sampling, you're always uh, uh, taking, like, 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 like getting something that, 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 that is already played. Yeah. But in this case, you are two musicians. So what, what kind of techniques do you use to give back something to him where he can go further with? Because, um, because you, you, you are always working Fast, yeah. Say, yeah. Uh, well, that's kind of the, that's kind of always the, the, well. That's what I fight with the sampling. Like it's always kind of a, a yeah, a memory of something else that already happened. So <coughs> just playing that back is kind of an echo of what just happened. And then, yeah, just bringing it back literally is not very interesting to me most of the time. Mm -hmm. So I try to actually work with it, like process it in a way, but not that it becomes totally removed to what it was. But so you can still hear the connection. Um, and I usually work in the in the time domain, so I don't change frequency, like I don't really filter too much, but I kind of scratch through the sounds, so I kind of catch up with him and then just yeah just go back, jump back to like a, a point further in the past, the kind of yeah playing in the time domain. So um, yeah, and I was trying actually to, uh, so you can actually hear or there's some kind of relation with the original sounds, but it's also a bit more interesting than just playing back that file. Yeah. And then I can do some pitch shifting and I do some filtering. So that's something. And I can do some stuttering of some kind of, of like one part of that sound that he just played. And he can respond to that to start also to play with that, um, I hope. It, 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 it feels very, very different responding to, um, even, if it, even if it's like a straight sample, which is something I've just played, thrown straight back at me because I haven't got that causal relationship with it anymore. So. It somehow always seems different anyway, and then I think in terms of giving something back, it, there's a huge tendency in the kind of improv that I've done to just jump constantly from one thing to the next, whereas reworking an episode that's just happened and kind of revisiting um, like strategies of revisiting previously used material are really actually quite useful structurally. Yeah. I mean, it, it feels really easy to play rather than right we're on the next thing. It's like we're still working this idea. Yeah. So you don't just always already leave it behind, sort of thing. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, but there's some kind of play with like with time, like yeah, something that happened in the past that you try to bring back yeah. in the future, right? The present, not the future. <coughs> so, so you it just feel like you're getting something back from the from the ground that's it's totally his his voice, let's say, it's, it's coming back to you. Um. It definitely feels like like Robert's voice, but it's there's moments of recollection and kind of almost yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha haunted with the memories sort of thing. Did I just do that? <laughs> Wish you hadn't recorded that then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. More questions? We'll also be everybody is still hanging around, I think, afterwards. So if you have some other questions, and uh, feel free to just step up to people that have been presenting stuff and ask questions. Thank you for coming to this open studio and I uh, hope you can. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry. Ooh. laughs>